um, an artisanal mine site in the Congo and a car manufacturer in the United States. There's obviously not only a geographical difference, but enormous asymmetry in terms of you know, their, their capabilities and also many steps of the supply chain between them. Uh, so from mine site via refiners in China, um, battery manufacturers who could be you know, in, traditionally in China, but increasingly in Europe and also in the United States to, to an EV can be seven tiers of a supply chain. Um, and uh, enormously different levels of capability. And so in such a genuinely distributed real world environment, to try and gather data and to notarize that data so that history can't be rewritten if it subsequently proves to be inconvenient is a near perfect use case, in my view, for a distributed ledger. Um, that bit of the argument is easy. I often get asked the question about energy use. Um, thankfully, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why we picked um, uh, a blockchain protocol that didn't have those concerns. Um, and you know, my view was that Hyperledger Fabric was you know, the closest to an enterprise standard when we started our business sort of five years ago. Uh, and I think probably it still is. Um, there are now, of course, different um, ways of achieving consensus on, on, on other blockchain protocols, but they're not quite as well established in the minds of sometimes quite traditional corporations um, that are still concerned about how their data is managed, particularly if they providing data into um, an environment where, by definition, you are sharing a proportion of it to create transparency. Yeah, absolutely. So security and transparency as yeah. well. How about you, Andreas? I know mm -hmm. that you've, you've uh, tackled some of these issues as well. Yeah, no, no doubt. Some blockchain technologies are still uh, linked to high energy uh, consumption. Uh, but we also have to um, thank this, the community that really helps tremendously to change technology, particularly in the Ethereum uh, context. Um, and of course, there, there is a, there's a plethora of technologies that is, doesn't use proof of work in the first place. Um, for us, we try to avoid, uh, or let's say for, for me, I try to avoid um, calling things blockchain so much. I call it trust. Uh, first of all, it's, it's a much broader term, or trust technologies. It's a broader term. Not everything is necessarily a blockchain. You can use um, a different mix of technologies that are typically used in the context of blockchain and, and assemble them in a different way. So it's a, it's a more neutral term uh, that, that really points out, yeah, we've solved the trust issue rather than we want to use blockchain. So that's sometimes, uh, I think in the past, it was too technology driven, mm -hmm. the thinking. Okay. Yeah, and we'll dig into that a little bit in a bit. And also the, the fact that you're really onboarding you know, different levels of people with uh, expertise and resources into these consortiums or into these blockchain networks as well. Alex, tell us a little bit about, you know, why from a Web3 perspective, uh, the work that Seal Storage and Filecoin is doing is really important for, for from a climate perspective. Absolutely. So <clears throat> part of the value that you get from using a distributed ledger and particularly Filecoin as, as a blockchain is what we've talked about a bunch here, which is, is that tr uh, trustless factor. So people can look at that and say this data has an absolute value to it. It's not something that's somebody's making up. And I think the big application here, one of the big applications is uh, with greenwashing. For those of you who don't know what greenwashing is, it's when a company submits some form of misleading data, false data, or potentially delay different statistics in order to present a better uh, outcome to the public in terms of what their environmental impact is. Mm -hmm. So I think if you actually have an accurate record of up-to-date information, but what your mission standards are, what your environmental impact standards are, you can create that, that system where people can actually look into that and see for themselves whether you're truthful in that sense. Mm -hmm. And I think right now greenwashing is a, a significant problem and it's not something that necessarily has a, an easy answer, but I think you know, blockchain really does have a very good solution for that. And another element that was discussed here from a supply chain perspective is uh, it really helps people in the manufacturing side of things or our client side of things uh, measure their scope two and three emissions, which is essentially in a very simplistic way, it's your, your downstream or broader emissions. So not exactly what you create manufacturing. Uh, for example, when we buy different hardware or different uh, other elements that the company needs to function, that type of manufacturer can look at the, our specific data and say, when I'm measuring my scope two, this is what my uh, boxes or my hardware or my compute is being used, and this is the energy associated with that, which can create a, a more accurate system for, their, for them to present to their overall stakeholders. Uh, and from a, a customer perspective, you can actually see, well, where is my data going? What type of impact is that having? Uh, so even somebody who's, who's doing really good work from a climate perspective, they don't necessarily want to put it in a, in a provider that has uh, a high usage of coal or in an area that has something that's particularly negative for the environment. 
So it really allows different stakeholders to, to look and say, what am I getting into from an environmental perspective? What, what is the emission impact that I'm willing to digest by working with this potential vendor or customer? And uh, in the broader ESG landscape, not necessarily environmental, but um, I think it's really good for a uh, misinformation uh, discussion. So we were very excited to be selected for the project with the Shoah Foundation and, yep. and Starling Labs, which for those of you who don't know is uh, a, a project to document uh, 55,000 videos from Holocaust su survivors. So we've got the testimonials being uploaded, uploaded into the Filecoin ecosystem as a way for further generations to, to look back and say, here's all these different facts and stories and prove that for the future. And I, I also think that uh, that applies to misinformation regarding uh, environmental standards as well as uh, other people's historicals mm -hmm. when it comes to their previous environmental 